Hey, what is up guys? My name is Oleg, this is Bond. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel and like the content, please subscribe so you don't miss any of the new videos. Today is Bond's birthday and we actually went to the park earlier today. Uh, we jumped into the fountain, did a little swim. I'll post a video at the end of this video if you guys are curious. Uh, it's very cute. Uh, but now he is very stinky. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let him nap, dry up a little bit and uh, I'll do the rest of the video alone. So if you've been following the channel for a while now, you probably know that I like to go to the flea market on the weekends and I like to collect vintage watches. Uh, this weekend was no exception. So on Saturday, I went to the flea market and I found a beautiful Russian Cardinal watch uh, from 1970s. If you follow me on Instagram, you know uh, that I found this watch because I posted a picture on there. I was so excited to find this watch, got a great deal on it. The seller wanted 25, that's Canadian dollars. We were negotiating back and forth and I got this watch for 20 Canadian dollars. Uh, it's not a fantastic deal because let's be honest, it's not a fantastic watch. It's not like a bought a vintage Omega or anything like that, but it's a special watch. And what I do like about it, that it's a very large size, especially for vintage timepiece. So I date this one around 1970s. I was super excited about it. Uh, the loom surprisingly still works. The date function worked. Uh, the watch was working. Uh, I was super excited, brought it home, cleaned the crystal and uh, posted the picture on Instagram. Really happy with the find. However, the watch was running a little bit too fast. By a little bit too fast, I mean it was running really fast. It was gaining something like two minutes every hour. So I decided, hey, why don't I myself regulate this watch? It must be easy, right? So I tried it. I took off the case back. I tried to regulate it a little bit. Uh, the balance wheel stopped ticking when I was tinkering with the uh, kind of the lever to regulate the movement. I give it a little push. It started working again. All good to go. Close the case back, left it on my desk uh, to wait out to see if my regulating did anything in terms of time accuracy. Come back to it two hours later. Uh, the watch is still running fast. Uh, maybe some improvements, but not much. So I took the case back off again. Now I gotta tell you this. Um, I was in rush to go to a hike with my nephew. I had my nephew visiting over for the weekend, so we were gonna go for a hike, so I was kind of in rush. And um, I adjusted the lever again, and uh, the, uh, the balance wheel again stopped taking back and forth. I uh, kind of gave it a little push, but it didn't start. So that was weird. So I tried and gave it a little bit more of a push and still didn't start, so Naturally, what do you do? You go on YouTube, you go on Google and you start looking up uh, tutorials and kind of explanations what could be the problem. So that's what I did. And turns out, uh, at least according to my research, the problem was that the hairspring was uneven or something like that. Uh, so I, I started researching and looking up how to fix the hairspring, how to take apart the movement. For some reason, in my stupid brain, I thought, hey, I'm Oleg, the watchmaker. Of course I am. I mean, I review watches on YouTube, so I must know how to repair them. Bad idea. I unscrewed uh, the balance wheel. Of course, the minute I did that, uh, the, the balance wheel came off, the hairspring came off, and, um, and yeah, I, I broke the hairspring and essentially broke down this watch. So now I can't enjoy it anymore. I can't wear it because it's broken and if you guys know anything about watches, evidently I don't, but at least according to my research, uh, replacing the hairspring to a watch because the one that I have is completely gone, it's very difficult and uh, kind of matching the right hairspring to the right movement is very difficult, hard to find, so essentially this watch here is gone. Uh, I am very upset about it actually uh, because I was excited to share this watch with you, of course, in a working condition to do a review, to give you a little bit of history behind Cardinal watches, uh, has very good fascinating history. Plus I was excited to add another vintage watch into my collection. Instead, I'm making this video and uh, sharing my bad experience with the watch and it was completely my fault. I didn't have to try to regulate the movement myself. I didn't have to stick my stupid fingers into the balance wheel and start it off again just stupid mistakes from my side. And the biggest kind of regret that I have about this, to be honest with you, 
is not the fact that I don't get to enjoy the watch anymore because, uh, well, you know, I have other watches in my collection, it's not the end of the world. The biggest regret, the biggest problem I have with this is the fact that this watch was working from 1970s. So it's been around and it's been ticking for 40, 45 years. Here it comes into my idiot hands. Four or five hours later, it's broken. It doesn't tick anymore, it's dead. So uh, all that history, all that is gone. Uh, that's why I am very upset about breaking this watch. But at the same time, I wanna use this as kind of a learning opportunity, share the experience with you guys. Uh, hopefully it will save you some hassle, some troubles in the future. I'm glad that I didn't try this on a more expensive timepiece. Now, I don't mean to scare you off of regulating your own movements, regulating your own watches, looking at the movements, just be very careful. Don't be like me while you're in rush, going off to a hike, trying to regulate the movement, trying to take it apart. When you're in rush, when you're going somewhere, when you can't dedicate uh, full attention to it. So that's it. That's my vintage Russian Cardinal watch story that I found on a flea market and that I broke in a few hours of owning it. Uh, the wound is still fresh. It still hurts. I'm very upset about it, but hopefully you find this information useful and maybe I can help at least one or two people out there and uh, prevent you from breaking your own watches because I will definitely not attempt this ever again. And if I do, I will make sure I know exactly what I'm doing and I don't just go in tinkering uh, within the movement. Bad idea. I appreciate you watching this video until the end. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know if you have had similar experiences. Have you ever broken your own watch? by trying to either modify it or regulate the movement or taking it apart or maybe not screwing the crown in properly. Share your stories in the comment section below. Hopefully somebody who's watching this in the future can learn from my mistakes or maybe some of your mistakes if you're willing to share them and it will help the overall watch collecting community. Uh, oh, by the way, I forgot to do the wrist check. I'm wearing my vintage Timex that I also found at the flea market uh, as kind of keeping up with the theme because I am talking about vintage watches and because I was upset about this one so I've had my vintage Timex on my wrist. I appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.